Hello, this is Captain Chaudhary. This is my second video on International Convention on Measurement of Tonnages of Ships. In my last video, we had talked about the various systems that prevailed, including the move sum system, and uh, then this new system of measurement of tonnage came in in 1982, and it became finally uh, in force for everyone in 1994. Now I had said in the last part of last video, I had said that uh, uh, there are certain spaces which are enclosed spaces, there are certain spaces which are excluded spaces. But before that, before that, let us understand how to initially measure all the enclosed spaces. So every space that is bounded by the hull of the ship, the deck or the deck head or the bulkhead, it may be a uh, uh, movable bulkhead, it may be partition, you know, all these spaces which are enclosed this way are called enclosed spaces. Even if they had slots, even if they had openings, they would be called enclosed spaces. Except uh, when a space is covered on top with the awnings, something like uh, awnings you must have seen on lifeboat deck. Now, from these spaces, Sometimes certain area, certain space uh, portions may be excluded from measurement and they won't be called enclosed spaces. But all those excluded spaces, if they had some arrangement of securing, they had shelves inside or there was a provision of closing such spaces or the inherent arrangement of the ship was such that there was possibility to close such spaces then they will not be considered as excluded spaces and they will be again included in the enclosed spaces now we'll try to uh, actually uh, know a little more about this enclosed spaces and excluded spaces let's look at them now we will try to understand the excluded spaces with the help of diagram let us say this is the deck of a ship right and suppose on the main deck you have say an erection like this and for the timing let us assume that the erection is shut from this side it is open only from the side right so uh, you may have a curtain or fashion plate which is not more than 0.25 meters that is 25 centimeters now here is a structure or here is an erection which can be entered from this side suppose this side is closed now uh, we must know what is the breadth of the deck uh, at the entrance and the opening that is available opening that is available should be at least 90% of the breadth at the entrance if the opening is 90% or more than that of the breadth at the entrance then certain portion of this erection can be excluded from measurement this portion is 0.5 B that means whatever is the breadth 50% of that you know this portion is considered as excluded portion and only the rest of the space is considered as enclosed space suppose the opening is more than 90% of B right and when you enter here normally 50% of the breadth is allowed as excluded space but suppose you have some say for example enclosed locker there so that this width this transverse width is not 90 percent of the breadth or more only this portion is allowed as excluded space the rest entire space will be considered as enclosed space now let's consider a similar erection in the forward part and let us say this is the entrance and let us say this is 90% of the B. The 90% of the B is maintained up to here. And suppose the 50% of 
be extended up to here this will not be considered as excluded space exclusion is permitted only up to here right so this will be considered as excluded space and this portion is not excluded because the width is less than 90% of the breadth at the entrance. Let us take a similar example in the four part. Let us say there is an erection like this in the four part and uh, to understand the concept let us say this is 90% of the breadth. If you draw a parallel line like this Suppose there is a locker over here, it does not make a difference. The locker is of course enclosed space, but say 0.5b extends up to here, then this entire space will be considered as excluded uh, space. Of course, these lockers are enclosed space. Now, although 90% of the breadth is extending up to here, but 50% of the breadth extends only up to here. So this will be enclosed, this will be excluded space and this is enclosed space. Let's say uh, this is the main deck and let us assume that uh, this is one erection and let us say there is another erection. Now the same rules apply whatever is the width at the entrance the 90% of the breadth has to be maintained then only that space will be considered as excluded. Let us assume that this side is uh, kind of closed and this side is also kind of closed. Now you have the 90% of the breadth opening here 90% of breadth opening over here provided that the clearance clear clearance without the booby hatch also without any obstruction there is a clear deck of at least 50% of the breadth available let us assume that there are railings on this side there are railings on the other side otherwise this uh, area in between is open to sea open to weather right 0.5b is excluded over here and 0.5b would be excluded in this part and the rest of the portion will be enclosed. What happens if the opening here is less than 90% of the B then this side the entire space will be considered as enclosed. The excluded space will be only on this side because here it offers the clearance more than 90% of the B. But suppose there is a booby hatch, suppose there is a booby hatch and the clear deck is not available in this open space, right? Clear deck of 50% of the breadth is not available in between, then neither this place will be exempted nor this place. The entire space will be considered as enclosed. Now let us look at one more situation. Suppose this is the main deck and let us say this is the accommodation block, you know, this is the accommodation block and uh, over here you might have an entrance and this might be the next deck, this is another deck. Now between this deck and the gunnel you might have openings like this. Now the question is the space between the bulkhead over here and the outer surface of the superstructure you know where these slots are there. This space is enclosed or excluded. So what is the height of this deck from the main deck? One third of the height is considered or 0.75 meter whichever is more you know this opening has to be more than that. Suppose the height is 3 meters, so 3 upon 3 is equal to 1 meter. So out of 1 meter and 75 centimeter, 1 meter is bigger. So this clearance, if it is less than 1 meter, this space will be considered as 
enclosed space and if this clearance is more than 1 meter then this place will be excluded. I hope you understand this example. And suppose on the side if you have opening this way then if we have to compare h by 3 h is the vertical distance between the two decks or 0 0.75 the bigger of the two. If this clearance is more than h by 3 or 0 0.75 meter bigger of the two then only that's, that much portion will be considered as excluded. This portion and this portion will be considered as enclosed. Let us consider one more case. Let us say this is the main deck and let us say this is the accommodation block. Let us assume that there is uh, an erection on the forward side and let us say it is open from both the side, from this side as well as the other side, it is open to the weather. So this particular erection which is open from both the sides, port as well as starboard side, you know, there is nothing except some railings, otherwise it is open. Then, you know, uh, 50% from 50% of the B from port side as well as 50% of the B from the starboard side that means the entire space will be considered as excluded space. Whereas imagine that if it is closed from the other side, right, it is open only from this side then only 50% of the breadth, this breadth from this side will be excluded and the other side will be considered as enclosed. Uh, to understand next example, let us understand this picture. Let us say this is the main deck and there is uh, one erection over here. And to understand this particular example, let us assume that it is closed from all the sides. It is closed from all the four sides. So in normal situations, this would be called an enclosed space. But let us say there is an opening over here. To understand uh, this picture, let us assume that this is something like swimming pool, you know. Now that portion which is visible directly from top, right under the opening on uh, the upper part, only that portion is excluded, otherwise the inside portion is enclosed. You know, only that portion which you can see vertically from the slot that is excluded otherwise the adjoining uh, space on all the four sides is enclosed space. Here is the deck and suppose here is erection and let us assume that this is the level of one deck and this is the level of another deck and uh, looking from this side you know there is a recess on normally this is assume that this is closed and there is a recess which is extending from the deck over here till over here. Now the width of suppose there is some kind of locker or something like that. The width of the locker inside should not be more than the width at the entrance number one. And another thing is the depth of this recess should not be more than two times the width at the entrance. Right? If it is so then it would be considered as excluded space. But what happens if instead of being rectangular if the space opens out like this or the width is more than twice the the depth is more than twice the width then it would be considered as enclosed space. Now let us look at the calculation part. How actually the GT and NT, that is the gross tonnage and net tonnage are calculated. Let us assume that uh, the total volume of the ship is say 45,000 meter cube and let us say the volume of cargo compartments is uh, say 33,000 meter cube. Let us say that the molded draft, molded draft is equal to say 9.2 meters 
and the depth is equal to 12 meters. The first thing that we do with the total volume is we apply it in this formula that is K1 is equal to 0 0.2 plus 0 0.02 log 45,000 to the base 10 gives me 0 0.29306 0 0.29306 so what I do is K1 multiplied by the total volume gives me the gross so uh, 0 0.29306 multiplied by 45,000 gives me 1318.785. This is a gross. Now let us find out the net tonnage. Net tonnage will be on the same grounds, the K2. Uh, similar formula is there, K2 will be equal to 0 0.2 plus 0 0.02 log 33,000 to the base 10. So gives me 0.29037. Now this value that is a K2 has to be multiplied with the VC that is the volume of uh, cargo compartments in a meter cube. So this will have to be multiplied with 33 that gives me 9582 this gives me 9582.22 so uh, uh, this is the value of uh, uh, K2VC so this is K2VC now this value will have to be multiplied with 4D divided by 3 capital D whole square. Now D is the molded draft and capital D is the molded depth. So that means uh, this value is equal to 4 times D. The draft is 9.2. This becomes 36.8 and this becomes 36. The whole square. But this value cannot be more than 1. One of the rules for finding out net tonnage is this value will not be more than 1. So if it is more than 1, we will assume this value is equal to 1. And therefore, the uh, net tonnage will be 9582.22 multiplied by 1. That means 9582.22. But now this value cannot be less than 25% of the cross. So definitely this value is more than 25% uh, of the gross. Let us check for the 30% of gross. That gives me 3956. This value is more than that also. So this can be considered as the net value. Now we have done the calculations for the uh, cargo ships. If uh, there is passenger ship involved, there is one more term which we are not doing right now. So this becomes the net and this becomes the gross tonnage of the vessel. Thank you.